Okay, so with chapter five, we start a section called Newton's Laws and uh, Linear Dynamics. So this is the first time where we're starting dynamics. In chapter two, we were linear kinematics. In chapter three, we learned how to manipulate vectors. In chapter four, we did two-dimensional um, kinematics, including circular, the kinematics of circular motion. And now we're doing dynamics. The main equation in this chapter and in upcoming future chapters, this equation will continually be used. This equation is uh, written like this. Sum of external forces is equal to ma. And uh, I remember I talked about this equation on the first day of class when we mentioned certain things are vectors, certain things are scalars, and then I also said that certain things are definitions, certain things are theorems. Is this one a definition or a theorem? Yeah, this is a theorem. That means it's something discoverable. It's something that you can prove. Uh, this isn't the definition of force. This is actually telling you when you have a certain force on an object, it's equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. This and this is a vector, the mass is a scalar. Um, it might be a good thing to, for us to review the units again, because we haven't done this for a while. Let's review, let's make a smaller table here and review the units. Mass, weight, and uh, force. The matrix unit system, MKS, and the British. In the matrix unit system, the units of mass was the kilogram. The British was, uh, mass was slug. We said that that's the one we don't use too much. And then the weight was Newton. And the British was pounds. And force was Newton and pounds as well, because the weight was just uh, uh, measure of the force of gravity on you. So this is uh, good to keep in mind. Um, so, and also the conversions too. Let's go over those. If you have a mass of one slug, that's equivalent to weighing how much? One slug is equivalent to what's the value of G in the British unit system? It starts with three. 32, yeah. So uh, one slug is 32 pounds. And where are we getting this equation uh, from? W equals mg. The weight of an object is equal to its mass times the acceleration due to gravity, g. In the British unit system, g is 32 feet per second squared. And in the matrix system, it's 9.8. So if you have a mass of one slug, so the slug, this is the mass. And then you multiply it by 32, that gives you the weight. 32 pounds. So that's one conversion. One kilogram is equal to 9.8 newtons. That was the other conversion. Again, this comes from here. The mass is m and the weight is w. And then the conversion between kilograms to pounds was one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. And that's good to convert from that way you can convert this way. You can go from pounds to kilogram, kilogram to pounds. With the first two conversions, you can go vertically. You can convert between newtons, kilogram, pounds, slug. So with those three conversions, you can go from either the British units to the matrix unit. You can go from mass to pounds, pounds to mass, either way. OK, so now, um, Oh, let me now describe for you what I mean by dynamics. What is the difference between dynamics and kinematics, just shortly. In kinematics, we're usually we're interested, the typical kind of problem was something like this, let's say. Uh, this is uh, one-dimensional kinematics. Let me give you the analogy to, uh, with one-dimensional kinematics. Let's say you had a car. And uh, you were told that it's going at 20 meters per second. 
okay? And let's say there's a tree here. The tree is uh, equal to, uh, oh, let's say, 60 meters away. And let's say the problem gave you something like this. The problem told you the maximum acceleration of the car is equal to negative uh, 2 meters per second squared. That's a typical linear kinematic problem. It gives you some information, and then based on that information, you're supposed to ask a certain, you're supposed to answer a certain question. In this case, the information is giving you is the initial velocity of the car is telling you there's a tree 60 meters ahead. It's telling you the maximum acceleration of the car is negative two, and the question might be, is the car going to hit the tree? Okay. Is the car going to hit the tree? Well, is it? Can we answer this? Okay, which equation would we use? Now, if the acceleration is constant, we can use those four equations of linear kinematics. If it's not constant, what would we have to do? I went over it last week. If the acceleration is not constant, what do we do? We integrate the A to get the V function, right? And then you can integrate the V again to get the X function. But if, you, if the acceleration is constant, the reason we can use those equations is because those equations are derived by integration anyway from a constant acceleration, you know? So which one would we use here? Uh, we could use, the question is, is it going to hit the tree, right? Well, we could use the third equation. That's probably the best equation in this case, right? Let's use the one that doesn't involve T because the problem is not asking us for t, right? So um, let's use the third equation. Uh, set the v final equal to 0. v initial is 20. Acceleration is negative 2. And then let's solve for the distance that the car will have traveled by the time it stops, okay? So you're going to have x final minus x initial is going to be 400 over 4, okay, is equal to 100 meters, okay? So I used the third equation because I wanted to get to the answer the shortest, quickest way. Okay, I set the final velocity equal to uh, zero. X finals minus X initial comes out to be equal to 100. So what's the answer now? Is it going to hit the tree? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's going to hit it pretty strong, okay? So it, it needs 100 meters to stop. Now, that's a kinematics problem. Let me show you a similar problem to that with a car in the tree. But let me make it now a dynamic problem, okay? Something like this. Okay, so the car is going 20 meters per second. There's still a tree in front of it. The tree is 60 meters ahead. 